yeah, here it is. The grand finale of the Truth Endgame series. As always, this is the Chloromancer. But before I start, I'm just going to say I'm sorry about this series taking so long. Uh, it shouldn't take this long because on the end of the day, it's just my opinion on a certain character. And just, uh, the thing is, I just was more scared of doing five plus hours of editing over a character that I don't use a whole lot. And then posting a video on a character that, yeah, I haven't do done a bunch of testing that it feels a little bit wrong for me and sometimes I'm just like I don't want to do it because I don't feel like I'm prepared 100% to talk about this certain class but yeah here I am sitting back again and just talking about the Chloromancer because it's the only character remaining so might as well just do it I still haven't done a lot of testing on the character because for the most part I've been doing like the trove Dells and all the all sorts of other tutorials not to mention the live stream so I kind of forgot about this trove and game Chloromancer but uh, the last couple of days I was using at least the Chloromancer just a little bit just to test it out in Uber 10 and yeah I feel that I can get some pretty decent opinions on the character uh, take everything with a grain of salt this is just my own personal opinion at the end of the day you have your own personal opinion if you agree or disagree it's all up to you but Please don't come in the comment section down below and just say, Hey, hey you're using the test incorrectly. You're being the dumb. Hey, hey. And just, no, just keep that to yourself. Don't be toxic in the comments below. Thank you. And one more thing before I start. Link in the description below for you to join out the Discord channel. I made a new Discord server for everyone in the community. So if you just want to join in, you can just go ahead, click in the link in the description below. That's it. Just let me know what platform do you play in inside the Discord so I can assign you to one role. With that being said, let's get started. Hello and welcome to another JMP video. I'm your host, and welcome to the finale of the Trove Endgame series, starring the Chloromancer. But before I start, I'm just going to say a little bit of something. Future me, go at it. No, not that meme. I mean the song. Not that song. I mean the old song. Yeah, that old song would have been nice, but I will get copyrighted. But no, not that old song. The other song. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, so I decided to, you know, post editing. You know, this is like kind, of, kind of cringy, kind of weird. Just me talking about a live commentary because, you know, I'm just saying the other song. Then just keeping quiet for a little bit. Yeah, I'm being dumb. Anyway, so yes, this is actually the song that I did use on my 30k PR series. So I decided to do this for nostalgic reasons. The other thing, it is another thing that I'm just going to showcase once I showcase the power rank, which is at 31,241. Hashtag good transition. But yeah, also another thing that I did is I actually got my Soul Purple name once again. Just for this video alone, I just wanted to make it as nostalgic as possible. So yeah, I got purple name and yeah, I got the old song from the 30 KPR series. Anyways, these are my stats just in case you're wondering. Pretty decent stat, pretty average ac across all my characters. Oh yeah, that is my Chloromancer stat. Attack speed, critical damage, all pieces of gear. This character has terrible momentum, so I might as well just use as much damage as possible and just use the basic attack as much as I can because this character is all about basic attack. So might as well just use critical damage, attack speed, all pieces of gear, maximum health, hat and face. Despite this character actually having some uh, health regeneration during the, the Blooming Paladiner explosion, this character dies a lot. The survivability is kinda bad. Let me tell you that much. It is kinda bad. But yeah, so I decided to get maximum health hat and face so I don't die. And critical hit on weapon so I can get close to 100% even though I'm not 100%. I got a magnifying ring. This character doesn't need like a, a lot of other stats. Maybe use a little bit of energy regeneration. But again, you don't spend a lot of ability that requires a lot of energy. So might as well just use whatever you want. You can use critical hit. You can use energy regeneration. I just use magnifying. I have Prefect Penguin. It is the best current ally in the game before they added the new ally from the Delphs update. By the way, I'm not going to talk about the character is going to be effective, like how effective it's going to be in the Delphs. I'm just going to talk about the current Into the Deep live server uh, Uber 10 Cro uh, Chloromancer. So it's just going to be similar to every single episode before. I'm not going to mention the Delphs and I'm not going to mention like the increased light. The maximum light currently is 6719 and that's the base that I'm going for. Alright, speaking of light, I will be using the Legendary Torch, which is the Uber 10 Legendary Torch. And yeah, this is the same I use on every single character. And this is the last one, so now I'm not gonna say moving forward. I have Arcane Emblem because this character, despite having pretty decent DPS and pretty good burst damage, uh, it still needs the damage, um, especially on basic attack, which is the main attacking tool that you will be using a whole lot of times. And then Leafy Lasher as well, which does a pretty low damage multiplier I believe it's 2.25 2 
and yeah, damage increase is very necessary with this character. Evil Eye Emblem. I actually did try it out on certain other ability, but I feel that this character doesn't need any other abilities. I uh, I might as well just use uh, Unyielding Emblem, but I don't want to use Unyielding Emblem because I want to showcase how the survivability works on this character. And so I decided to use Evil Eye Emblem so I can help out with the burst damage and the instant damage on uh, certain abilities because this character lacks on instant damage abilities, so I might as well just use Evil Eye Emblem. Anyways, those are my gear, let me move on into my gems. So, my gems are as follows, as always, going over Empower Gems, Fire, Water, Air, Lesser Gems, Fire, Water, Air, and then Cosmic Gem, you know how it is. And then, let's start off with the 2-1 Class Gem, which is 2 Magic, 1 Crit Damage on Class Gem. Air, it is 2 Crit Damage, 1 Magic. Fire, it is 2 Magic, 1 Crit Damage, perfectly divided half and half across my Fire, Water, Air, and Power Gems, which is half of them with 2 Magic, 1 Crit, the other half 2 Crit, 1 Magic. As far as my lesser gem, it is going to be a 2-1 magic, 2-1 crit damage on my water gems, 2-1 magic and 2-1 crit damage on my air gem, 2-1 magic and also 2-1 magic on my fire gem. So I have a little bit more magic damage on my uh, lesser gem, so I have 4 with 2 magic damage roll, 1 critical damage roll and 2 of them with 2 critical damage, 1 magic damage roll. And then let's move on into my cosmic gem and my cosmic gem is 2 light, 1 magic. And 2 light 1 magic on my lesser gem and 2 light 1 magic on my cosmic and power gem. So this character still lacks a little bit in terms of light, light on, across all of my characters. This is one of those few that actually has 6 light rolls. So I wish I could get a little bit better rolls. Maybe that will change my a little bit my opinion on this character. But with 6 light roll and torch at least almost 5k light. And I'm just going to say that there's a, a couple of problems with this character. So I do have Flower Power, Explosive Epilogue, Class Gem, and my Mojo. So my recommendation is obviously to have Explosive Epilogue. There's no question about that because the plants actually do trigger Explosive Epilogue. So get it. Like with this character, it is pretty important because this character is all about burst damage. And Vampire and Vanquisher. Please, for the love of God, get Vampire and Vanquisher. I don't care what the hell you use. Like, please get Vampire and Vanquisher, even if it is a two star. Get Vampire and Vanquish on this character because this character's survivability. I've never actually had so much trouble with a character when it comes to survivability ever since the Draco. Even though the Draco still has some problem with survivability, the Dracos make up for it in terms of damage. This character lacks a little bit in the damage because everything takes so long to actually ramp up in damage that the survivability like takes a hit to 11. It is so ridiculous. The survivability is kind of bad. Which is kind of weird considering that this character can heal itself up and the passive ability actually gives you a, a shield that doesn't allow you to take damage. I have died so many times with this character, it's not even funny. So at least get yourself Explosive Epilogue and get yourself the Class Gem. And as far as the other Empower Gem ability, always uh, you never go wrong with Pyre This, so you can go with Pyre This if you want. But Explosive Epilogue, Vampire and Banquager are a must. And Green Gatling, the class gem, also it is a must. So yeah, that is everything regarding my gems. I will be moving into Uber 10, right? Now, so what do I think of the Chloromancer Endgame? But before I start, let me know what do you think of the Chloromancer Endgame. And also, let me know what do you think of the Trove Endgame series as a whole. Do you like it? Do you dislike it? Do you think it's a good or a bad series? Or do you think it's a good or bad character? Also with the Chloromancer. And let me know why in the comments below. You can pause the video right now. Alright, welcome back. Again, even though no one answers that question, I'm still gonna do it, no matter what. You gotta persevere, <laughs> even still. Anyways, what do I personally think of the Clone Mesa Endgame? Uh, unfortunately, I think this is the worst class in the game when it comes to Uber 10 grinding. I'm just going to say that outright. Damage, it is pretty pathetic. It takes a long while to actually activate any sorts of ability. It is a problem. This character, it is a problem. It has so many bad things going for. And it is alright because this character is meant to be more used as a Shadow Tower type character. Because, you know, it has pretty decent DPS, good crowd control, and... Not only that, the burst damage it is pretty good, but everything regarding dungeon grinding that like this character doesn't have it. It doesn't have momentum, the momentum is literally among the worst in the game, uh, probably even the worst. It doesn't have a good basic attack, it doesn't have a, like instant cast ability like at all, and not only that, it doesn't have survivability. Like this character doesn't have anything going forward when it comes to dungeon grinding. Uh, starting off with basic attack, the basic attack does a whopping solid 1x damage multiplier 
with a base attacks per second of 2. This is exactly the same as the Neon Ninja across the board, which is the same damage multiplier and the same attacks per second. And like I mentioned in my Neon Ninja video, this is a bad basic attack bad multiplier. Um, it is not good. <laughs> it really is not that good. Like You will be surprised on how terrible this basic attack really is, because if you look at it DPS wise, it means that you will be shooting 6 attacks per second at 300% attack speed and 6 attacks per second it means that you will be doing 6 times damage multiplier from your basic this is coming from a basic attack that is single target so yeah it, this is not good this is really not that good if you want to compare it to a even decent basic attack not even that good of a basic attack a, a decent basic attack let's just say the gunslinger even the gunslinger's basic attack is kind of bad but still even though it is also as well single target but it attacks faster at 2.5 base and it does more damage at 1.4 so this is weaker and slower than the gunslinger's basic attack which was already a pretty bad basic attack so yeah the basic attack not that good it doesn't have any hidden quirks uh, aside from you know healing your plants and you know you know the drill like it allows you to heal plants much quicker well, you know that's how it is that's the only quirk that it has going for when it comes to doing like a uh, basic attack aside from that it is just a terrible basic so that is number one. Number two is going to be Leafy Lasher. Leafy Lasher, it is a all right ability, but there's a couple of things going against this ability, which is number one, it does low damage. So it does 2.25 times damage multiplier. I believe it is future me. As always, it's going to correct me if I was wrong. So 2.25 times damage multiplier, which is weird. It attacks two times per second and you know, it is not instant cast ability because again, it takes a couple of seconds to actually activate. I believe it is three seconds. Two or three seconds to actually activate and yeah you have to shoot it down with your basic attack in order to actually activate it much quicker even still it is not instant cast ability and uh, so yeah that is one thing that i will say it is not that good and you can throw up to four of them but unfortunately only one of them is going to dish out damage this is pretty decent as an extra damage ability but again when it comes to actually doing uber 10 you want to have really strong instant cast ability that's how you get the best momentum out there so characters like the Vanguardian, characters like the Knight, the Revenant, the Neon Ninja, those characters actually have really strong instant cast ability, well except the Neon Ninja, but technically the Neon Ninja if you have a uh, shuriken you can just do a shadow flip into a basic attack, you will throw the shuriken that's pretty much instant and that will dish out so much ridiculous amounts of damage in one hit, so even still if, if it takes 3 hits to actually activate the basic attack, well to activate the shuriken and the Neon Ninja, at least the damage makes up for it. This character doesn't have any of that. Like, all the things is actually like the Leafy Lasher is the fastest ability that it can proc, aside from basic attack, and it still takes like 3 seconds if you don't attack it with basic, and only one of them is going to dish out damage. This is not good. This is legitimately not good. Uh, in terms of damage multiplier, I believe it can two shot uh, one star bosses, one of them, so two shot uh, one star bosses with Arcane if I recall, and yeah, it's not that good coming from an ability that is not instant, so yeah, uh, no, this is just simply no, it is not that good of an ability, it is decent in Shadow Tower, not good in Dungeon Grinding, maybe decent in Curse Skull because you can throw it down uh, before you activate the Curse Skull, and once you activate the Curse Skull, you will have all of those hell going <laughs> inside the Curse Skull, the enemy will die as soon as he spawn. Also, one more thing to keep in note is that that ability actually slows enemies down, so as you can tell right over here, uh, if this mushroom just come at me, you can tell that it's going to move really, really slow while inside the, the leafy lasher. So that's one thing to keep in note. Uh, that's a pretty decent thing, especially on shadow towers. That is pretty good, especially if you can just go really high up in the air and shoot with basic yeah that that is going to be pretty decent but yeah that is all about leafy lasher second ability is going to be blooming pollinator blooming pollinator has insane potential of being a really strong ability it is similar to like the burnt offering on the draco which is you throw something you use basic to activate it and kaboom it will destroy and it will do pretty decent damage the draco's burnt offering will do 4.5 this one does 5.5 which is much better it's much stronger it is it's a really strong ability because if you blow like two of them at the same time you will be doing 11 times damage which is more than enough to actually one shot even three star bosses so 
in terms of doing that, in terms of uh, these characters like Blooming Pollinator, it has really good potential. Let's compare it to the Draco's Burnt Offering. Uh, the Draco's Burnt Offering, one of the things that you will notice about the Draco's Burnt Offering is that other players can actually activate it. This is a big deal, by the way, because with Draco, especially if you're doing something like Shadow Towers with uh, a couple of other players, you can literally just throw down the Burnt Offering and it will immediately blow up. Uh, the Color Master doesn't have that. So that's a pretty big unfortunate thing. <laughs> so you, yourself, the Chloromancer, have to shoot it yourself. So you have to shoot Blooming Pollinator. I'm going to die, probably, because, you know, that's that's a thing that's going to happen quite a lot, especially in this video. Consider one thing that I'm going to mention after Blooming Pollinator. Blooming Pollinator, you have to shoot it yourself, first and foremost. So <laughs> that's a bad thing because it means that you have to focus on shooting Blooming Pollinator in order to actually activate it. So that's number one. Number two, it requires you to hit it seven times, which is stupid compared to the Draco, I believe it's three times and other players can hit it. So you have to shoot it yourself seven times in order to activate it. Otherwise, it will stay there for 20 seconds. <laughs> uh, it's so ridiculous because if you don't shoot it once, it will take 20 seconds for the ability to actually activate. That is ridiculous, by the way. 20 seconds for an ability that only blows up and does 5.5. That only does one times damage multiplier more than the Draco's Burn Offering. Which, I believe it is... In three seconds, it will detonate, which is just... It, it's bizarre to think about, like, the amount of things that this character and has going against it. Like, why? Why does it take 20 seconds? And the other why thing, it is... Why does it have a one-second cooldown and the Draco doesn't have any cooldown? Or the Draco... I believe the Draco has, like, a half-a-second cooldown, or I don't think it has a cooldown. But this one has a one-second cooldown for some reason. So yes, one-second cooldown on an ability that will take 20 seconds to activate and it does 5.5. And you have to shoot it seven times with your basic in order to activate. Yeah, even with max attack speed, you will not detonate this in one second. That's one thing. The other thing it is that it will heal you up. I don't know how much percentage it actually heals you up, but it does heal you up. Future me again is going to add a text on screen. But considering how long it takes to actually activate this ability, if you are really low in, ten in terms of HP, you have to take so long in order to activate the Blooming Pollinator in order to actually heal up. Where there are certain characters, Tomb Raider, Revenant, those characters can heal up immediately. See what I'm going for? Like, like it is a, one of the biggest what the hell in the entire game. Also with Candy Barbarian, that's another character. Like, the Candy Barbarian is also an instant cast healing. So, I, I, it really is, it, it bothers me. Like, it is such a big, like, huh? moment because it is an ability that takes 20 seconds to activate seven basic attacks from the chloromancer only to activate only to do 5.5 times damage and to heal you up a little bit i believe it is like uh 25 percent of your hp I, I may i may be like completely wrong on that one because i haven't tested out the healing on the on uh, the blooming pollinated which is one of the things that i actually overlook now that i think about it but this is another thing that i need to talk about range enemies are this character's bane like range characters move a little bit uh, towards the left or towards the right none of these abilities actually hit the enemy from far away so if you actually miss by a little bit on the range enemy you have to throw everything all over again which just makes this character one of the most inconsistent characters out there like, it is so ridiculous that you saw that other 3 star, I'm going to die, 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 I'm going to die. Whew. Okay, I didn't die. So it makes this character pretty inconsistent, like, the inconsistency on this character, it is ridiculous. When it comes to Curse Call, this character, it is really good. So that's why it is so good in Shadow Towers, because uh, most of the enemies inside Curse Calls, they are actually close range enemies. If not, they don't have a lot of HP. So abilities like the Blooming Pollinator, the Leafy Lasher, they will kill enemies rather quickly, so it's not going to be that big of a difference, because crowd control on this character is really good. Like, everything just hits around it. But, my god, is it bad for dungeon grinding, because literally, it takes so long to activate all of the abilities, no instant cast ability with a bad basic attack, and not counting the ultimate ability, which is even worse. And then, aside from all of that, one of the things that I noticed, which this character had problem with survivability, it is one of the problems that I noticed on the Lunar Lancer, 
you cannot use pots while throwing plants as you probably could tell right over here I'm holding down the blooming pollinator and I cannot use flask so especially if you're spamming a lot of abilities you're going to see that I was pressing the flask it didn't even proc once like there we go there, uh, there's one this will kill you a lot like let me tell you this will kill you a lot Especially like for something like the Lunar Lancer, you cannot activate a flash mid crescent combo. You cannot. With this character, you cannot do it mid throwing plants, which is this character's literally damage. So you have to throw the plants, activate a flash, or activate a flash and throw plants, which is way too cumbersome. Okay? Considering that there's characters that can activate a pod and then just use immediately abilities that will dish out high damage. Hence, like for example, I've been on Ben Guardian, Spirit Squire on Night, Bulwark Bash on Revenant, even Blast Jump on Gunslinger, stuff like that. That, that those will allow you to actually use a flash and then activate an, uh, an ability. This character, you have to think either to use an ability or to use a flash. You cannot do both, which is pretty ridiculous, considering that again, this character's multipliers aren't that high. The highest damage multiplier is Blooming Pollinator at 5.5, which is not that high, it is average ac across all old damage and abilities. Then let's start talking about the ult. The ultimate ability is the biggest joke ultimate ability that I've ever seen in my life. This ultimate ability, what it does, it allows you to spawn 10 random plants. That's it. 10 random either a blooming pollinator or leafy lashers. Nothing else. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't even proc the class game, which is one of the things that I am will be going for uh, in a little bit. But... It doesn't proc the class gem. It is not like a set amount of plants that you throw. You literally throw random amounts of plants. So you can literally throw eight leafy lashers and the maximum, by the way, is four. So you, technically you will be throwing six plants because you will be throwing four leafy lashers and two blooming pollinators and that's it. The other four um, leafy lashers will just disappear because you exceeded the limit. So that's going to happen, and it is a bad thing. So <laughs> the ultimate ability is a joke. It doesn't even activate class in ability, which is why they really need to change this ult. Like, not even buff the ultimate ability, just change it. Just remove this ultimate ability and add something. I would be completely happy if they just make the class gym ability the ultimate ability, and the class gym a chance to spawn the ultimate ability, which is, you know, the class gym it is ridiculous this is one of the things that if this character just gets some little tweaks here and there on you know on the class gym at the very least this bad boy right here does so much ridiculous amounts of damage it's not even funny that the dps on that ability is ridiculous so how it works is each time you throw a blooming pollinator or a leafy lancer you will have an around an 8 to 10 percent chance to activate or to spawn a green gatling the green gatling is the classroom ability the classroom ability what it does it will stay there for i believe it is five seconds and during those five seconds yeah it is ridiculous you will be doing so much ridiculous amounts of damage let's see if i can spawn a classroom ability i've done this i believe on the 20k pier series and the 30k pier series but so let me see if i can yeah there we go there it is my classroom yeah, that was the classium with one evil eye. The classium is no joke. That was a world boss, by the way, which has around 63 million HP. Just saying. So it pretty much just got deleted by one ability. That is extra damage, by the way. So what it does is, once it spawns, it will take like a one second break. After that one second break, it will shoot a barrage of, I believe it is 10 shots. Each and every single shot doing two lines of damage. So you will be doing 20 lines of damage. Each and every single line doing one times damage, by the way. Once it does those 10 shots, it will stop, reset for one second, and then come back and then shoot again for uh, another 10 shots doing 20 lines of damage. So technically it will have a 10 times damage DPS because, you know, one second is doing 20 times damage, one second is pausing. So technically it's doing uh, 20 times damage per two seconds, which is 10 times damage DPS, which is ridiculous coming from an ability that is extra damage. A lot of people say that the Revenant Spear Spear, it is really good. I myself consider that that is the best extra damage ability in the entire game. And that ability does 5 times damage per second. This one does double the amount of damage. So imagine coming from an ability that is 
extra damage then you take into account the blooming pollinators which do a lot of burst damage especially if you have like three or four of them you will do an insane amount of burst damage and then you take into account the leafy lashers doing you know 2.25 times damage two times per second which is 4.5 per second which is just incredible like the dps on this character is no joke but unfortunately it's a couple of things number one no instant cast ability number two class gem it is a really low chance number three the survivability on this character is kind of trash because you cannot use flats while you're throwing plants it's a passive ability that doesn't allow you to take damage and also has a blooming pollinator that actually heals you up but the thing is is that the blooming pollinator it takes so long to actually activate and not only that it is your highest damage ability and then you take into account like all of those things it has some really potential really good potential this character has some really good potential but the thing is it's just bad that's why I did use Evil Eye Emblem just to help out with the instant damage ability because Evil Eye does a 6 times damage instant cast. So it does help out with this character's uh, lack of instant cast ability. But still, it is this character has some really good potential of being like one of the top DPS type characters. It just needs some tweaks here and there. So I'm just going to say this character in terms of light dungeon grinding is bad. It's pretty terrible. It's pretty abysmal. Might be the worst class in the game, even worse than the Tomb Racer. However, I find that the case that this character is like this, but they need to really make the DPS feel more powerful because this character, if it had like really good DPS, then I can just go by and just be like, oh, okay, well, this character is terrible at dungeon, but it's really good in DPS, so it's going to be really good in speedruns, in shadow towers, so on and so forth, like the gunslinger, for example. But it is outclassed by classes that pretty much do the exact the same thing as this character which is for example Draco and then you see those characters doing better in terms of dungeon grinding and still doing as good in in shadow tower like this character it needs some some little buffs here and there uh, which I was surprised to see that this character didn't actually get the rework considering that this might be the weakest character in the game uh, even more so than the tomb racer but hey that's just me that's just my own personal opinion let me know in the comments below what are your personal opinion on the Chloromancer. That is just my own personal opinion on using this character. Yesterday I was using this character grinding non-stop. And I was dying left and right. Like literally I just entered an uber 10 world. Just went into a dungeon, completed, went into the next dungeon and I died. Like it, it was that bad. Let me just use the class gym again because I love the class gym. I love the class gym how we, it destroys... The, look at that! That wasn't... <laughs> Jesus! That was without the need of Arcane, he almost one-shotted the, the world boss with one barrage. It is so, like, the potential is there. It still needs some little tweaks here and there. So the potential is there. That's all I gotta say. But I'm going to complete this one-star and that three-star dungeon. And just call it a day and just call it a series. Well, after the Into the Deep changes. But all I'm gonna say uh, from this character, it has potential of being a really top contender for Shadow Towers. It just needs some tweaks here and there. I don't think this is a character that is meant to be a good dungeon type character. Which I'm fine by by the case. So making this character more of a Shadow Tower DPS type character. So it's going to be really good for something like Delves. Because it, it does have the crowd control and it can have the DPS. But if it does get some tweaks here and there. I, I, I can see this character having some really good potential. Yeah so that is my the end of the day my opinion. Going overview of this character, basic attack is sucks, 1 times damage, 2 times attacks per second. Passive ability, even though I never talk about the passive ability, it will create a shield that will automatically absorb like all damage after you reach 50% of HP. I don't know the cooldown, I believe it's like 30 seconds, probably I'm completely wrong on that one. It's going to help you out a little bit in survivability, but not a whole lot because you will you will see that that shield pop out and immediately go away like it's, it's kind of meh that is that like the leafy lasher 2.25 only one of them can do damage you can spawn up to four of them i don't know why but even still like only one of them is doing damage two times attacks per second uh blooming pollinator is one of the biggest why in the entire game because it requires you to hit seven times or wait for 20 seconds for an ability that does that heals you and not only that it will also do 5.5 times damage multiplier which is not that high considering that this ability takes so long to activate 
and the ultimate ability is one of the biggest joke ultimate abilities out there. You pretty much only use this on cooldown just for the heck of it, but aside from that, it is just a meh ultimate ability. And the class gem is ridiculously overpowered, but it has a really low chance of activating. But yeah, that is all for today. Thank you for watching. Thank you for sticking around as always. Thank you for watching the Trove Endgame series. And thank you for being so patient with this series. Uh, I'm going to leave you guys with the Into the Deep changes, but it's been a blast with this uh, series. It felt so good actually just posting this, you know, talking about characters all over again. And just going over the characters, how they perform currently in Uber 10. I don't think I'm going to do that once the Delft update comes out. Because all the characters are going to be too powerful that, yeah, pretty much I'm just going to say, well, this character can one-shot, this character can one-shot. Like, characters are already almost all of them one-shotting. So, with the new changes with the Delft update, I'm pretty sure all the characters are going to one-shot, no problem. So, you're going to see a rise of the characters that, actually, in terms of movement speed, are going to triumph over the characters that actually do a lot of damage. So, characters like the Shadow Hunters are going to be much better once the Delft update comes out for Uber 10 because uh, the Shadow Hunter, even though it's not the fastest character out there, uh, it is a character with really good mobility. And the one other thing that I actually like it was the damage, like the DPS and damage output. But with the Delft update, you get so much light that it's not even a problem. You're going to destroy Uber 10 with Shadow Hunter, no problem after the Delft update. Anyways. Thank you once again for watching, leave a like if you want to help the channel grow, subscribe if you want to see more content like this, and that is all for today. Once again, thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time. Take care and keep on hunting, and I'm going to leave you with the Into the D changes, and also make sure to check on the Discord channel in the description below, so you can join up and just state your role, and make sure to let me know which platform you're playing. That is all for me, enjoy the Into the Deep changes. Alright, let's get started with the Into the Deep changes at 6719 light. So, the Chloromancer doesn't have a lot of changes to begin with, I'm just going to say that much. Uh, you're going to see like a little bit more consistency, a little bit faster kill time with Leafy Lasher, and Blooming Pollinator being able to one-shot out to world bosses, but, you know, one at a time, one at a time. So let's start talking about Leafy Lasher. Leafy Lasher doesn't do anything to regular mobs any differently, so it is exactly the same. However, it's now capable of two-shotting one-star bosses, 3-shotting world bosses and 4-shotting 3-star bosses with arcane emblem active before it was one more hit to kill so before it was 3 hits for 1 star, 4 hits for world bosses and 5 hits for 3 star bosses now it is 2, 3 and 4 so that's going to be everything regarding leafy lasher nothing else needs to be said like the ability now feels a little bit more consistent still is not going to help out a whole lot considering this character's kit it's all about burst damage, but that's one thing to keep in note. The second and last change, I know it is very very short, it's not comparable to like the Tomb Racer, which was ridiculous. The Blooming Pollinator can now one shot up to world bosses with Arcane Emblem active. Before it wasn't capable of doing that, before it was just barely capable of one shotting up to one star bosses. Now it's capable of one shotting uh, barely up to world bosses. Now it's pretty much the same thing, but instead of one star bosses, it's now world bosses, so that's pretty nice. Again, it's not going to mean a whole lot considering this character's kit. But that, again, that's one thing to keep a note. And yeah, those are the only two changes that I was able to find with this character. Basic attack is equal. Um, the ultimate ability, that there's nothing need to be said about the ultimate ability. And the green gatling still destroys everything in just an instant. And yeah, that is everything for today. Once again... That is the end of the Trove Endgame series. I still have plans of making uh, different types of videos. Uh, but yeah, this is the end of the Trove Endgame series. Uh, which is kind of crazy to think. Like, this series took me so long to make. And yeah, I, it's kind of crazy to see its end right now. And yeah, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this, uh, this series. Let me know in the comments below which is your favorite episode. And yeah, that is all for today. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time. Take care and keep on hunting. Farewell.